17 twist, 55 grain, full metal jacket, boat tail, 25, 250, zero. Left hand is a bitch. Yeah. Okay, let's try this again. Hey guys, I'm back. I don't know if you can see this on this target, but I'm going to go in as close as I can. Uh, center mass targets within the uh, circle right here are my three shots after I made my last uh, front sight post adjustment. And as you can see, as you can see, they're all within the, uh, well within the, the kill circle, the zeroing circle. So, uh, this rifle zeroed at 250 meters, so I'm gonna go for a uh, another three shots, and then I might go for a headshot. Hey guys, I'm back from the range finally. Um, <clears throat> you can see in some of the earlier uh, parts of the video that uh, that I did zero the Daniel Defense AR-15 rifle successfully. I was amazed about some things in this rifle, really about all of it. That it was very very easy to zero. Um, I think the free-floating rails made a difference uh, in this instance. It was very easy to zero. I think I zeroed it within like the third or fourth shot groupings after I made my adjustments to my uh, to my windage and one or two adjustments to my elevation. As you can see from the target that I showed earlier in the clip that right within the zeroing the zeroing circle, it was, you had three uh, shot, well placed shots, so you can't ask anything better than that. Um, the only thing I didn't like about the rifle, and I'm surprised if, if you're watching, if somebody from Daniel Defense is watching this, guys, you might want to, you know, come out with something a little bit better than you did have, but it's the rear iron sight that I'm talking about. It's okay. Uh, it came with, like I said, it came with my rifle. Uh, it's Pretty standard A1 type of uh, sight, 
it did the job, but I really had a hard time adjusting it. Um, I left a little few Mars on the side where I had to adjust it with like I think a ballpoint pen or something like that. They Somebody hooked me up with the range, but it was pretty difficult because you have to push in that detent and then, you know, make your adjustments on your wheel right or left. But I can't really grip onto it with my fingers. That's the trouble with those old A1 sights. I'm used to the A2 that have the rear elevation wheel windage knob or the knob and your uh, left and right windage knob. That's what's so so good about the uh, the A2 sights. For the price I paid for this, I really wish they would have put something on here a little bit more better than the A1 side or at least made the A1 side a little bit easier to adjust because it was for a while there it was a pain in the butt and I kind of marred up my sight which the sides of my sight which I'm not too happy about but a little solvent and some elbow grease and it'll come off and be just good as new now what's going to happen with that guys I'll probably uh, whenever I go back to the gun store I'll probably uh, get a mag pull uh, back up rear iron sight. I did look at those at the store when I was at the uh, when I was at open range where I went to shoot. They did have a nice mag pull back up uh, back up iron sight that's flip up. I might go ahead and invest in that uh, next month or two. And the good thing about that is that if I buy it, I got to re-zero it. So you know, oh no, could be worse things, I guess. But uh, if you if you did buy a Daniel Defense, which I highly suggest. Go ahead and, and chuck the rear iron rear iron sight unless you're just a fan of A1 rear sights and go ahead and uh, buy a uh, flip up A2 style iron sight. But um, other than that, guys, there's like I said, there's nothing but good things about this Daniel Defense M4. I got a few compliments from the people around me at the range, and there was a guy uh, two lanes over from me who had a uh, similar Daniel Defense rifle that I did. He had a scope on his though but he he said he's he loves his rifle so and I, and I can see why after you know the shot groupings I had and how easy it was and how much of a blast it was to shoot I can see why these rifles are popular um, like I said I, before you know uh, last year or so when I bought it I, did, I didn't know anything about Daniel Defense I kind of took a chance when I bought it because I didn't do my homework which I should have but luckily um, I made a good choice and this was a, a good buy. Um, really, guys, there's not much other than that except the rifle. Rifle performed flawlessly. Um, I ran, like I said, 55 grain, uh, full metal jacket boat tails through it. Um, it wasn't any expensive highfalutin ammo. It was kind of just middle of the road, average 55 grain. Uh, it did pretty good. Um, the range about the range I went to, I went to open range in Crestwood. Uh, it's a really good place to shoot, especially if you're going to zero, uh, you know, your assault rifles or hunting rifles and stuff like that. They have a special. Uh, they have about four or five lanes in the rear of the in the rear of the place that's just for zeroing, where you do have the uh, benches, stool to sit on, a, bit, a nice bench rest uh, that you can adjust, and the. Uh, um, the range, the range arms of the target holders automatic. Um, in this case, I had to convert feet to meters because there's a me measured out or meters to feet because theirs is measured out in feet and not in meters. So I calculated my distance and then I punched in. I think it was 83 feet. It was as close to 25 meters as I was going to get because it was only in like one foot increments, not half foot. Because I was I was asking the guy and he said we only go to one foot increments. But anyways, I. Adjusted it out to my 25 meter zero, and you know brought it back in every every uh, three shots. My shot grouping it beats having to uh, do your shot groupings and then walk out to the target and then come back. Or if you have a spotting scope, that would be probably helpful too. But uh, the range there is pretty good. They have everything you need: brass catchers. Uh, I, I I really enjoyed my time out there. Uh, I was out there like I think an hour and 45 minutes just out there having fun after I zeroed so I I thought I was there like an hour but uh open range is a pretty cool place and you can shoot pistols in there too and on the uh, basically the main pistol range you can shoot I found out you can shoot uh, your assault rifles and pistols in the same uh, shooting area it's just that where I was at was was strictly for zeroing 
and no, you couldn't shoot pistols out there, or I would have. But uh, other than that, guys, there's really nothing else I have to add to this except this was a, a great rifle and a blast to shoot. And I did try to zero in my EOTech, but my batteries were going bad in it. I did manage to get a few shots and get it close to zero. I'll probably go back to uh, open range here in the next couple months and make sure I put fresh batteries in my EOTech. And I would like to get a quick uh, detached plate with it. You can just set on. Sometimes I like to have nothing in my way, even though you can uh, co-witness your iron sights through the EOTech. That's a good thing about it, but mine was slightly useless this time in that my fault is that I didn't check the batteries before I went. It's been a while since I uh, used my EOTech on, a, on another rifle that I had, so that's my fault. But at any rate, guys, um, Check out the range. Uh, take your rifles out there and zero. It's a great place to zero, as I said. And uh, anything you else you want to know about my Daniel Defense or how it did, just let me know. I'll be more than happy to uh, reply back to you through YouTube. But if you can, guys, go to your gun store and uh, check out one of these and see how much they run. And if you like it, go ahead and buy it. Uh, you won't be disappointed with it at all. Until then, I'll see you later, guys.